Hello, today is May 4th, 2016, and I'm Corey Cohen, and I'm examining this Apple One board. Probably the most unique Apple One I've ever seen. Um, there's a lot of interesting things with this board. Um, first thing to say is uh, it's wave soldered, which is cool, like the rest of them, except that this one appears to have been wave soldered with different sockets. The sockets seem to be, uh, they're RN, uh, rubber nougat sockets, and they seem to be consistent with what was in an Apple II, uh, the first ones available. Um, though we do have these yellow sockets where they were, um, I guess, trying to uh, get the smaller 8-pin uh, sockets. Um, but they, these would have been consistent with the app, an early Apple II. Same thing with these blue caps would have been used in the early Apple IIs, um, not necessarily in an Apple I, especially a non-NTI board. Um, we also noticed that uh, the heat sink is wrong, the screws are actually different, um, the diodes are completely wrong, uh, or I should say different, uh, the regulators are, all the caps, all the big electrolytics, not just these, the other ones. Um, and this is never actually, it doesn't look like it was even removed, it just looks like it was never soldered in, the 7404, um, for the 6800 only at C1. So this seems to be pretty unique. Um, there is some damage um, from some uh, corrosion uh, on parts of this part of the board that can be corrected, uh, which actually looks like it's going to cost this um, this transistor here, which can be replaced, and the video pot. Um, we did do some electrical checking on this board and noticed that uh, this one cap is a problem. Um, we also have two diodes that are questionable. Um, they're actually not working right, quite electronically, electrically, um, and one of the diodes here may be a problem. Um, there is some corrosion on this um, regulator, so we probably want to take it out, check it if we're going to bring this board up, and then obviously clean it up and then put it back if it's functional, if not, find a replacement. Um, interesting things also about this board are, obviously the chips are all... Um, TI chips and, and other things like that. Um, the sockets, I mentioned the PROM chips um, do not have the a Apple symbol on them. They are dated correctly or dated early pretty, pretty much, MMI um, for 1976-10 uh, week, but uh, they don't actually say Apple on them. Someone has actually um, sharpied on A1, A2. Um, the cassette adapter is very similar in that it was assembled the same way with uh, the wrong versions of the Apple II sockets. Different LED, different cap than would have been there, different sockets. So it's almost like um, you know, this was uh, uh, kind of assembled uh, later um, by hand. Dif different uh, types of transistors than that would normally be there. As well as, um, you know, we've got a date of 7623 on that. And, you know the cassette adapter came later anyway, um, but uh, you know the resistors are actually uh, not um, the same kind of spec as the resistors that we normally have um, in a cassette adapter, and the same issue with the ROMs, or I should say labeling on the ROMs. Also someone has set up a switch here to deal with memory so that you can change the bank contiguously. Um, the edge connector um, actually looks like it was uh, put on by hand, so someone actually put the edge connector in because these weren't unsoldered. But they put the edge connector in, bent some of the, the tamps down, and then soldered it by hand. So that wasn't um, wave soldered, but the, the actual chips were. Um, <coughs> and this board looks like it has, excuse me, an ex uh, someone had done some work here with a variable cap tied into uh, the timing circuit. They've actually fitted a uh, larger um, but same value uh, crystal, and have done some modifications um, and by the way, you may have noticed the shift registers are the CAN type. Uh, but they've done some modifications on the back relating to uh, holding the, uh, the minus 5 to the, um, uh, to the RAM chips, trying to clean it up, I guess, getting a cleaner uh, minus 5 off the regulator directly, and tied it in and clipped the line that fed it here with a slight scratch in the um, uh, cut trace. And they drilled an extra hole here to allow the larger um, crystal, which... You know, the interesting part is um, this looks like it was done experimentally because this is not how you kind of solve this. Um, they've also, um, because of the different uh, heat sink and the way they put the regular in, they put screws in. You can see this was a used board, used a lot actually, because um, the actual solder has uh, raised up and into the, um, the screws. Now, also looking at this board, um, it doesn't look like it's ever really had uh, 
any screws put through the holes because they just seem in perfect condition, um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, but there is spots where someone has done some work on trying to sort things out. So we can see some fresh solder here where it was done by hand. But you do see where things were done by the, um, by the wave soldering, which is why uh, I don't think anyone would have removed every socket off this machine and replaced them. I think they used whatever was available at Apple. So I think this started out as a blank board at Apple and someone had assembled this machine um, or this board from that. Um, we do have the telltale wave soldering signs. Uh, a few minor scratches on the back, nothing major. No real major peeling at all as well. But you can see where there was manual soldering. So I have a feeling the sockets were put in first through wave soldering and then the big caps as they were found were probably hand soldered in. So you can see the flux uh, here, here, here. So um, don't know exactly uh, who assembled this, but uh, we're gonna start checking out and seeing what happened because uh, this could be a very interesting board um, from Apple history perspective. Uh, you know, someone playing around with uh, dynamic RAM refresh using spare parts, uh, there's no real reason you should be doing this kind of mods that were done here. Um, so for all we know that this could potentially be a board that was used to test things um, for the Apple II, which was doing the RAM refresh differently and maybe someone was trying to test the tolerances for that and had uh, kind of uh, screwed around with things so that they could mess with the tolerances of how the refresh circuit works. Um, also, this heatsink is way undersized, but we don't see anything here that shows that there was a larger heatsink. Um, the original heatsink would have really scratched up and discolored it when, uh, when it was placed in. You know, see some shadows here, but that's because it's actually the sunlight, but not there was actually ever a real large heatsink here, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, you know, I really think this came from a, uh, you know, a leftover board with some spare parts that were floating around that someone found at Apple. Um, the paperwork that we have is pretty interesting too. Um, the paperwork we have, uh, showed it earlier, um, is, uh, is all just um, pristine, full set, including the marketing materials, the marketing schematics, and the uh, marketing ads, which is pretty cool. Um, we also, I mentioned it, have the uh, have an original cassette, which normally would have been typed, and this one was handwritten with an old Apple computer label, which is not the label they used when they sent software out. Typically, uh, all the software examples we've seen that came from Apple prior to them becoming a real company with the, as they started building the Apple II, um, were, were typed up on a typewriter, and then, then the label was put on. This wasn't, so this was handwritten, so this could have just been someone... Uh, you know, at Apple, who uh, created a tape with a, it looks like it's almost stamped on the Apple computer. You know, someone took a stamp one on a blank one. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of interesting. It even says good luck on it. So let's see if someone actually knows whose handwriting it is. That could be really, really interesting. So um, this is, uh, once again, um, an Apple One, uh, probably the most unique one I've seen. It is real. I've done all the tests to make sure it's real. Uh, and this one is, uh, you know, can be brought to operating condition. There are a few components that would have to be changed out. Uh, would I bring it? That's a, that's a good question. I think uh, we need to establish uh, the history of this board uh, to see if we can kind of figure out exactly what it was used for because this is something special. Um, yeah, I haven't seen one like this at all. It's unique. And this doesn't look like this was like someone just hacked up a board. Someone was trying to do something purposeful with this uh, relating to memory refresh and even flipping around the switches and other stuff. So. Uh, Kind of neat. Um, as I said, all this stuff I would probably clean up um, just from a uh, preservation perspective because obviously I said there's some corrosion here and I think that came from some moisture. Uh, it won't affect the physical board, it's affected some of the components that are attached to the board, like we've lost the uh, video pot and it looks like we're going to lose the, the um, I don't know if we can save that, the, the transistor. But uh, you know, the, a lot of these chips were TI chips which tend to corrode and rust. But the sockets themselves are RN sockets. Those tend to be much better than the TI sockets that uh, Apple originally used. So I think this board would actually be a pretty reliable board. Um, I wouldn't reverse any of the, the um, uh, modifications because that's kind of cool considering what uh, it may have been used for. And uh, obviously the heat sink is undersized. Uh, I would probably keep it, um, though I would make sure I have a fan blowing on that thing constantly. Uh, if it was an operation, but that's really more to summarize the operational condition. 
but I got to say, of the document set um, with that marketing material, this is definitely the best document set I've seen so far uh, in, in the best condition. I mean, everything, the basic manual, the cassette manual, just everything is there. So this is an Apple One documentation set. What we'll call the celebration board. Since every board tends to get its own name or nickname, we're gonna call this board the celebration board. So I'm gonna go and open up the document set just so we can make sure it's nice and complete. So I'm gonna come around to the other side of the camera. But you will notice there's the actual Apple ad an Apple One operations manual, a basic manual, a cassette interface manual, and full separate, not just the ones that are built into the manual, full separate documentation um, schematics for the cassette and the board itself, as well as the original tri um, power supply with triad uh, transformers. So in looking at the set, <clears throat> and I have washed my hands so we're all clean here, there's no nothing here, I will be very careful, move this a little bit down, just make sure we have a complete manual. So we're looking at the Opera One Operations Manual, it appears to be intact completely, it's in great shape. We actually have some corrections in the manual, which would have been normal. We can't tell because they're mostly circles. Some is in pencil, some is in pen, so it's probably not done by anyone at Apple. There's a correction on the schematic, which is a fold-out, which is in great condition. And everything's intact and all the pages are here. This even has the errata of the hardware manual. And it appears to be in um, a folder that is that appears to be original dated, um, probably from that time frame. Um, but they didn't actually come in a folder like this. The basic manual is intact. It's got a staple through it. And it all looks like all the pages are here. So we are good. So this looks really wonderful. Um, the advertisement is here. Someone had actually manually added up what it would cost to get a fully loaded system and wrote it on the advertisement, which is a magazine advertisement on, on it's two-sided. So this is a great piece of, uh, of the collection. And the cassette interface guide is fully complete and in great condition. There's some original uh, cassettes. These aren't the actual, uh, This well this one isn't the actual original cassette. This one is uh, stamped Apple Computer. It seems very early so it's before they actually had real cassettes printed up. So uh, it looks handwritten with the notes good luck on it which is pretty amazing. So um, this could be either Jobs, uh, Waz, or Kotke, or one of the others who wrote it. I'm going to take a good photograph of this and uh, send it to uh, some people to ask early Apple employees to see if they recognize the handwriting, because that might be really neat.